Hey guys, Stark with Cyclone FPV, and I'm actually doing a, I'm going to do a quick video here on the JH EMCU uh, SI uh, F4 uh, uh, setup here, and that is going to be the uh, 16 by 16 here. Uh, give me one second. I'm just getting a few things organized. All right, so let me do a picture in picture here, and let's bring that to the bottom, I guess, or top, I guess it doesn't matter. Sorry, let me just do this real quickly, and uh, I meant to do this earlier. But um, it, just with everything going on, it's been a little bit hectic uh, to get things done. All right, so that should be centered. I haven't really had time to line this up. Okay, so I've already, uh, I was putting this together, and then I realized that I hadn't done a video on it yet, and I had a customer ask me about it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart, and I'm only going to do the, uh, the setup um, to get to the point where it'll kind of explain uh, how to do your uh, configuration and such. But I'm not going to uh, connect motors right now because the motor part of this should be pretty simple on how to connect to your ESC. Um, so I'm just going to use temporary connections. I'm going to desolder the things I put on there right now. I realize that it's not going to help if I don't show you from the beginning. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take my receiver off. Okay. So here's our flight controller. I'll remove the ribbon from that. So let's put the flight controller here. And then we're going to put our ESC. There's our ribbons. And... Uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll also take this off. So let me see how I want to do this because I'm going to need some magnifying glasses here. This is a pretty small board to work with. <clears throat> let me put this light up here. Whoops, not there, but there. That should work. Open the door. There, maybe? Ah, hell, whatever. There. Keep it like that. That should keep it pretty lit. I don't think it's going to get in the camera too much. I hope. There. All right, sorry guys, just uh, trying to find some magnifying glasses here. I think what I'll do is I'll use these for right now. This should at least get me through this build. Uh, I've been pretty lucky since I've got my glasses. I really haven't had to use them that much. But right now this board is so small, might as well. All right, let's get to it here. First thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take the uh, JST cable off that I put on here. All right, that way we can do this entire build from the beginning if I can get this off okay so with that off my glass is on there that's great now I look like a super dork okay so um, let me just show you what we're working with this out of here let's get this out of here and I thought I had a cloth here I do right here so I can keep this kind of semi clean all right so I don't have a frame to mount this to right now I'm just doing it for the purpose of instruction so let me go ahead and show you where we're at okay all right so here's here are the components you will get so you'll end up with the three pieces VTX flight controller ESC you'll have your ribbon cables here Okay, and you'll have some rubber standoffs and such. I'm not going to be using those right now, but what I am going to do is I'm going to get some of, um, some of these screws here. And uh, we are going to just, I just need to find the right uh, pieces here. So bear with me. Hopefully I can find these pretty quickly. I'm gonna remove, uh, I put a small uh, two millimeter nylon fastener on here so that it wouldn't touch the controller, but this board that you see, but at this point it really doesn't matter because I'm not gonna put on anything conductive. It's gonna stay on the mat. So I'm just gonna use these so I can keep this board level on the surface because what I did is I only had two screws and so it was kind of rocking back and forth, which is fine for me, but not it's not good when you're trying to do a video on this. So let me just put these off real quick. Okay, um, so you can find the, uh, let me actually, let me get our website up too, so I can show you what I'm talking about here with the website. Make sure I have all that. One, two, all right, that should, that, there it is. And then I'll get the Cyclone page up. That way you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to the uh, references for this. 
Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is, obviously you can tell here you've got your, um, this is where you're gonna put your battery, your cable, like your X, uh, XJT cable, like this one here. I'm gonna straighten this up real quick and clean it up. Let me just... Oh, I can't do that with glasses on, hold on. This cable is kinda uh, seen better days. But I am just gonna go ahead. I did pre-tin it, um, and I'll probably just tin it again real quick. Give it a little bit more here. So let me just pre-tin the cable. And there's one, and there's two. Okay, so on the, uh, on the uh, ESC where you're gonna put these, right, they, they actually, uh, there's actually an indention right here. So you can see that on the tip of this, and I'll try to heat this up so you can see it. So as you can see on the board, this is going to indent in here. Um, and so it kind of makes like a U shape, right? And so the best way to get this to hold properly and to be real strong is to um, go ahead and just lay the wire in there and heat it down. So what I'm talking to you about is doing it something like this. Okay. Kind of set it in there and pretend it, right? So set it in there and just lay the wire on the top and then heat it and it'll fall right into place like that. Okay, and that's done. Same with the power. Now my cables are a little nasty because they keep getting reused so they don't look as, uh, as good as they would if they were brand new, but still the same thing applies. Just go ahead and line it up in the slot there and it doesn't take but a second to heat it up and have it fall in properly. If I can get this stupid thing to hold. And there we go, all right? So both of those are lined up in. That's gonna hold pretty nicely for the work that we're gonna do right now. So we've got our we've got our power and our ground. Everything else looks good. So those are gonna hold, like I said, for the time being, those will be fine. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and get our cable inserted. Now for this, I don't need these, so let me go this route. So we're gonna use the wider ribbon for this, okay? And, whoops, and then what I've seen a lot of people try to do is try to put the ribbon in this way from the front and you're not going to do that. You're actually going to come from the other direction. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see that. Okay, so um, the way I do it, and it really doesn't matter if it's going one direction or the other at this point because they will it will adjust. I'm just trying to find my tweezers here. All right, so the way I did it was I got a pair of tweezers. And you just want to be careful, right? But um, I did. I got a pair of tweezers here. And I'll just... Let me see if I can... Is this a little bit better? So I'll line it up like this. Make sure this, uh, this clip is flipped up and just kind of put it in place there. There you go, just like that, okay? Using the tweezers makes it easier. Then close your clamp there. Now, we've gotta get to the flight controller. And that's it for the ESC. I mean, you really, as long as you've tinned your pads, you're good to go. But you'll, now it's time to put it into the flight controller and you see you're gonna have two areas, right? Two ribbon areas. So we're gonna go with the wider one, that's on the bottom, and that's gonna allow this cable to U over. And so I'm gonna go ahead now and do the same thing. So the best way to do this is to just kinda of flip the flight controller upside down, bring the ESC on top of it, make sure your clip is up. And again, just kinda of feed it in there. There we go, push the clip down and that's locked in place. So now we've got our flight controller and our ESC set, okay? So first thing we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put in these screws to hold it in place and put in my spacers here. I'm gonna put my small screwdriver somewhere here. That's all right. It's been a crazy week, so I'm allowed to have a day of not knowing where my tool is. They are, the tools are laying around somewhere, but I'll tell you what, we've been scrambling. So everything's kind of moved around. All right, so I'm gonna put all four of these in because I want this to kind of stay balanced this time. Uh, the last time when I was working on it here earlier, it was just all over the place because it only had two screws in. All right, let me see. I need to find two things. Where are they? <laughs> nope, 
Nope, nope, nope. Oh, I can use this one. Perfect. Now I can use this. All right. So we've got two of the screws in there. We'll get the other two in real quick. Okay, let's get our last one. Okay, screws are in. ESC is ready to put the flight controller on, so there we go. Let's get the flight controller on. Slide that down, and there, we're done. So the first part of this is ready. Now that's what it should look like, and your ribbon cable is gonna be looped on the inside, kind of like a, like a U-shape. All right, and that's done. So with that done, now we have our pads here to use, okay? And, um, and we have our we have our camera input over here, right? Which is going to be right here. Okay, so you have your video, your positive, and your ground. That's on these sides. You have your uh, pads here, and that's what I was going to show you. So let me let me just kind of let me kind of do this and see if this can make it easier for you. So let's try that. Let's see how this works. Okay. So on our website, if you go to our website, but now I've got to find my uh, here it is my keyboard. <sighs> And let's go to uh, type in J-H-E uh, as soon as my keyboard kicks on here. Uh, oh, well, that's wonderful. <sighs> okay, so let's just do this. I'm gonna go this route then because my keyboard now, I have a wireless keyboard and I left it on my, by accident and the batteries are dead. So let's just go to flight controllers and then let's go to J-H-E MCU. see where I'm at here. Let's try this way. I would normally type this, but I can't. So let me see if I can find it this way. Holy cow. Okay, one second. that's going wrong today is hit me pretty good. Let's get rid of these. Put in these, and I don't really edit my videos, so you're seeing what I see. And that's just the way it is. It makes it easier on me. So you'll see all my screw-ups here. All right, let's see if we're back in. All right, okay, so let's go to search, and I'll have to correct that on the JGMCU. So let's go JGMCU. And we're talking about this one right here, the SIF4. And what we're looking at right now is uh, the wiring diagram, which is going to be right here. I want this one. Okay, so um, what we're on, on our board here, uh, and this is going to be for our VTX, so I need the other one. And let me see, one, two, three, this one. There it is. Okay, so here's our video, here's our camera stuff that I was just telling you about. And here's our inputs here. So we're gonna be using the ground, the five volt and the S bus for this one. And if you're using a three volt, you can use this one here. You got your LED, your buzzer, and then your ground and so forth, okay? So we're gonna be connecting right here. And so that's the next part is I'm gonna go ahead and just solder the receiver. All right, so let's get back to it. Sorry about that guys. Everything today is, it's like a cursed 
from Curse today. So let's just hope for the best. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to use a standard free sky receiver. So let me go ahead and just get this going. bus okay all those look fine and so that's going to give us a receiver now uh, i'm not worried about putting the camera in because uh, well i mean i guess i could i didn't grab one uh let me turn this real quick um but the camera wasn't really my area of, con of concern because uh my main thing was to show you how to set up your small audio and to configure your uh um receiver but Let's see, I think I've got a camera laying around here. So if I do, it looks like it's this one. So I'll just use this little dinky one to give us some video, I guess, for this. So we're gonna go with our videos on the outside here. Take our five volt. And we'll take our ground. Okay, that's what that looks like. See if I can show you that a little bit better. Okay, and then um, we're going to, we've got our, our S bus now connected and the last thing is going to be the VTX. So for the VTX, we're going to connect the cable in the same way. So I'm just going to turn this around and I'm going to grab this cable. And I'm going to hold it like this. Make sure this flap is up here. Now this one was a little bit harder to do than the ESC just because it's smaller and the angle's a little off, but you should still be able to get it. Just be careful not to damage the cable. Um, just kind of try to feed it in there. There it goes. That's in. And then we're going to come over to the uh, VTX and do the same thing. Again, using the tweezers. Go ahead and just... There we go. Okay. Now, last thing we need to do is just put our standoffs there. So let me see. I think now with taking that two millimeter on, I think I should be able to fit this. So let me just go ahead and put our standoffs on. That'll work perfect. So let's do that. All right, I don't need these anymore now. I just need my glasses. Whew, thank you. Back to normal. <sighs> okay, there we go. Let's get out of that just a little bit. should be able to grab. I think there's enough, just enough thread left for this thing to grab. Yep, just enough. Okay, now that we're at this point, right, and everything's fit all nicely and the ribbons are all uh, set properly, 
So now what we want to do is we want to program this, right? So we're going to go ahead and plug it into Betaflight. So now I might as well just get you to here. Nope, nope. Let me see there and there. Okay, so there we go. All right. Now we want to go to Betaflight. So here we go. And we are going to plug in our USB. All right. So uh, as far as, as you can see on our website though, if you're, if you're at our website and you close this down and you scroll down here, it's gonna tell you use the Maytech F411. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our beta flight here and we're gonna go to an update firmware. So we're going to select our Maytech F411, and we're going to pick the newest build right now, I guess. And we're just going to go ahead and load the firmware, and then we're going to flash it. Now that that's ready, let's go ahead and log in, connect, apply custom defaults, connect again. All right, and here we go. So let's calibrate. Now I know this board's sitting in an angle because of that, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go to ports. Now here's the here's the important part, okay? So if you want to use smart audio, you, first of all, you're going to turn serial RX off on UART1. You're going to activate it on UART2 just to verify you can read that right here. If you're going to be using SBUS or any of these, then you're going to be using uh, RX2, which is UART2. So make sure that you make that adjustment and you're going to use UART2. And then you're going to come over here and this supports the IRC tramp protocol. So you're going to go ahead under peripherals for UART1, make sure everything else is off and disabled. And you're going to select IRC tramp and now click save and reboot, okay? So those are the main things that people I think have had the hardest time with is, is trying to figure out those uh, protocols, right? Or those ports, right? So now uh, under configuration, uh, this does support D-Shot. So you're fine with that. Um, uh, you do need to make sure you're at serial base and you're at SBUS. And I'm not gonna worry about the rest of this right now. Uh, well, I mean, I'm gonna turn some of these off, I guess, uh, because we have a heavy CPU load here. So let me just go ahead and turn off. Uh, I'll leave OSD, turn off anti-gravity. I could leave dynamic filter for now, but usually I wouldn't. Um, and I'll turn on television. Let's click save and reboot. <clears throat> All right. Now, for me, because if you've seen my videos, you know that I'm going to do my configuration. Even though this support D shot, I would always do my configuration in one shot. So I'm going to drop these down to four and two. And now let's see if we can get our CPU load a little bit lower. Okay, good. So we're at 9% now. So that's great. So we dropped a little more than half. Uh, okay. So with that done, now what we're going to do is um, we've got our setup done, right? So we've got our, we've got our, to recap, we've got our port set for IRC, uh, uh, VTX RC uh, uh, trap protocol for your uh, smart audio. And we've got our um, SBUS on serial uh, RX on UART2. Uh, our configuration is set like this, although you can do yours as you wish. This is not a setup on that as much as it is how to configure this board. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and head over to receiver and I'm going to power on my QX7. And I've already bound my QX7 to this receiver. Sorry, let me hold this down properly. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay, so I've already bound this because this is one of my test receivers. Okay, all right, all right. So you're going to see now, um, as soon as we power this up, uh, and so I also have this screen to show you. So we're going to look at this screen. Let me put this here. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave, well, let me let me see if I can change the screen images. There, let's just try it like that maybe. See if that helps. That way you can see really what's going on. Okay, so right now I'm gonna plug in the, um, 
the power source to it and I'm using an AC to DC converter. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that. Make sure you stay within your range on this board. All right, and again, all the information on this board is on our website here. So if you wanted to see, um, it's gonna tell you, you just gotta stay between 2S to 4S. Okay, so right now, I'm gonna power this on and uh, I'm running at about 11.6 volts. So let's see how it reads right off the bat. We're at 11.55, so perfect, okay? Um, now, hopefully this isn't gonna interfere with our uh, wireless signal for this video. So uh, one thing we're gonna do is on mine, I'm gonna come down to the receiver and I'm gonna drop it down to where I'm in the TAER. Uh, um, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, channel mapping, oh my gosh, my brain's fried right now. So TAER channel mapping. Uh, and now you can see that my throttle's moving, everything's, everything's looking pretty clean. Uh, I'll go ahead and disable everything else and turn my switches, I can see them working. And now what we wanna do is we wanna get the video, right? Because we wanna test and make sure all right, so what we want to do now, I'm going to have it find the right channel here. There we go. Okay, so we've got our camera. I'll just aim this camera somewhere else for right now. It doesn't really matter where it's aimed. There, we'll aim it at the uh, soldering pad, okay? So here we are right now, and what we wanna do is um, we're gonna verify everything else here. So let me go ahead, go to my configuration, make sure everything else looks good. Let's see, I did turn off telemetry, but I may keep it on just to see if I can get telemetry to fire through this receiver. All right, so we're gonna go up. Uh, you're gonna take your controller, right, to do your smart audio to make sure you're working properly. You're uh, gonna, let me exit and I'll show you. Okay, so when you boot up in beta flight, right, you're gonna take your throttle and put it in the middle and you're gonna go to the left with that and then you're gonna go up and that gets you to your menu here and we're gonna go to features and then we're gonna VTX. And uh, we can see here that, um, let me see what I've got. Oh, that's right, they changed this. I didn't do my mapping. Oh man, hold on. I just remembered now that they required us to change that, so we had to, all right, so, well, we're gonna be doing something extra here, guys. I totally forgot that uh, part of this now has to be done. So, uh, we have to load our channels, um, our VTX channels, and I completely forgot about that. So let me just go back here and show you what this means. All right, um, so in in Betaflight, the new version, um, you have to go to your uh, uh, OSD tab here, <clears throat> and you're gonna go to your, sorry, your video transmitter tab, and we're gonna need to load our uh, frequency channels, right? So I'm just gonna load from file, and you could actually download load this from uh, uh, Betaflight. So let me show you where you would, where you do that. Um, let me see where they got everything here. So it says if you need your table, you can go to this page. So click go to this page, it's going to take you to your beta flight page here and you can find your now we're using tramp protocol so this would be the file that we download right now all right and so if i want to take that one i would click it now i've already clicked it but i'll download it again anyway uh, this is oh sorry you have to you can't do that everything right click on it and uh you want to click let me see save link as okay and then i've already labeled it here so i'm just going to let it do it as number one again and it's gonna save that. It's a pretty easy, pretty quick download. Once you have it downloaded, you need to go back to Betaflight and you need to click load from file. Now you can manually set yours, but I'm not going to. So this is the same file basically. It's gonna automatically put in my table for me the way I want it. You can rename these, you can do whatever you want. And once you click save, then you're gonna start seeing, uh, no, sorry, um, sorry, save, not save to file. Okay, now I can set up, now my channels are set up. I forgot that with the new Betaflight does not set up. So <clears throat> now, uh, let me go back to my page here. And if you watch the screen that I'm on, so let me do this. Okay. I'm going to go back, save an exit, exit. All right. So now when I go up, it's getting hot. I know. So I go to features, and then I can, um, let me go to my band. There we go. So we'll pick, um, let's pick band B, 5733, and we're going to set the power to 100 and click set. Now, if this is working, my screen should start flickering, right? And now it's interfering with our signal here. So I'm gonna try my best to change that real quickly. Okay, so there we are. I wanna change this because it's interfering with us pretty bad. 
So let me go to um, let me go to E, and we'll go to E three and click set. Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can get that so that our video will not be interrupted anymore. Yeah, that's E three, and that frequency looks good. Now I'm just hoping I can get on this little screen right here. Oh, there it goes. Let me see if I can slow this down. Okay, so there we are. Okay, so there's our signal. Our screen is working. Our camera is working. Our setup is good. It is getting hot. Um, so I did forget, and I'm sorry, guys. I was trying to get this done for a customer, and I totally forgot that the new beta flight does not um, uh, does not do that. So I, you see now we're getting our warning. The core. I don't know if you can see the text, but it's basically giving me a core warning. The it's hot because we have not flown anywhere. But that's the setup. Okay. So um, I will give you a link to the uh, beta flight. Um, uh, the table, uh, VTX table, and I'll put that link. Uh, let me see. I'll, I'll I'll make a tutorial page on this one, and I'll put that link on this page. Um, but if you have any questions, as always, please just let me know. Sorry about that. Um, I think we've lost our uh, video here. Oh wait, maybe there is. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I think we have some video issues now because the VTX is interrupting. So I apologize about that. But in either case, if you have any questions, uh, you can always email me and let me show you. Please contact me now using our contact page at cyclonefbv.com. And as always, um, uh, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, always appreciate it, guys. And other than that, uh, that wraps it up. God bless. Say fly, guys. Spend time with your family. You never know how much time you have, so enjoy it and make the most of it. And I know right now we're all stuck at home with this uh, mandatory at-home things or what have you uh, because of the coronavirus. So make the most of it. Enjoy time with your family, guys. Okay? We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.